It's been tough. Um, it's been tough on coaches and players and, and everyone. Um, you know, the guys we let go um, are really good coaches and they're even better men. And um, those are hard decisions that had, had to be made. And um, I can't thank those guys enough. Um, I couldn't care about those guys anymore. A lot of the players feel the same way. Um, so it's, a, it's been a tough 72. When did you start to think that change on the staff was going to be necessary? And could you just maybe walk us through the process of deciding that and then making the change when you did it? Yeah. Uh, you know, those guys have done unbelievable job helping us to get better. And they're all, like I said, good coaches and even better men. Um, been talking with Trev for a long time. Appreciate those conversations. Um, you know, it's hard to, it, it, we've come so close in so many games and it, it's hard to think we can keep doing exactly the same things and, and get over the, the top. And it's not any person's fault, any one of those coaches' fault. Um, sometimes there just needs to be a, a little different voice and, and maybe little changes that can make a difference. And um, the timing was tough uh, in the middle of a season. Um, but everything's going to move really fast here after the season uh, with recruiting and signing day. Um, and it's kind of important to uh, get guys in place to help get those things done. And with a bye week and time to evaluate, I uh, thought that that was the best time. When did you kind of formulate in your mind this plan that Trev talked to us about that you, you submitted to him? When did you start to think about it? And when did you decide that you had to make these significant changes? Uh, we, Trev and I talk every week. Uh, some of it's about that kind of stuff. Some of it's about the premiere of Yellowstone. Um, enjoy talking to him. Um, you know, the idea has been going back and forth for a couple of weeks here. And, and for me, it's an easy decision. You know, I'm in this business primarily because I love the players. I love the mentoring side of this job. I love being around the guys all the time. Um, I took this job because I love Nebraska and I love this university. Um, it would break my heart to think we've made the improvements we've had and, and gotten it so close in so many games and, and not get an opportunity to see it through. Um, so it's, it's an easy decision for me to make any sacrifices I have to, to to have the privilege to continue to be here. What's the vision for the layout of your role over the next year? I mean, do you see, do you want to shift the way you manage or direct the program or have you talked to Trevor about that? Yeah, we've talked a lot about that. Um, this job is bigger than a lot of other jobs. There's just a lot more that has to be done uh, on the field and off. Um, frankly, I've been wearing myself a little thin trying to run the offense and call the offense. And it isn't just game day. It's, it's all week long. And, and there probably are, are areas of the program that I could spend more time with um, if I wasn't so occupied with that. Um, you know, he talked to me about that. I agree. Um, I appreciate his. Uh, advice on that and um, I'm going to do the best I can to put together a team that that allows some of those things to happen. Your contract is uh, shifting he said was that something you brought to him or did he bring that idea to you or how did you come to that? You know we talk every week I think I, I brought up the idea originally and didn't hear anything else about it and um, he kind of brought me some ideas and, and again that's an easy decision for me. Um, I'm in this business because uh, I love the kids and I'm here because I love this place and um, man I want to see this through and get this right and um, any sacrifice I have to make to continue to do this uh, that's an easy decision. What is, what is your vision for the offense? What are you looking for um, going forward? Um, you know we've been really good on offense when we have the right guys we've been a lead on offense um, I, I'm not necessarily looking for wholesale changes um, I did have a lot of guys around me that knew a lot of the same things that I knew, um, and that's worked. Um, I think it could still work. Um, kind of looking for some, some fresh ideas to help, um, not necessarily wholesale changes, but if we think that gives us the best uh, chance to get a little better, then uh, we will. So kind of in the early stages of um, identifying people, have a pretty good idea of what I want it to look like, and we'll see where we land. How quickly do you want to assemble that staff based on recruiting and, and transfer portal and all that? Well, the sooner the better, but there's a lot of people with jobs in other places, and I imagine nothing can be done uh, until after season's over. So, uh, you know, right now uh, we got some really good um, support staff here. 
Uh, they're going to do a great job coaching these guys. Um, I want them to do a great job coaching these guys because the players deserve um, our best effort to help them in these last two games. They're going to give their best effort in these last two games. Um, we're playing some really good teams. I think Wisconsin's number one in the country on defense right now. So that's where my focus is right now. And uh, when I get free time from that, um, do my best to, to identify some possibilities. Is there somebody helping you with identifying possibilities? There's a lot of people helping me with identifying possibilities. But uh, at the end of the day, these were my decisions, and then um, they will be going forward. Do you, do you feel like you hire a full-time special teams coach in these four hires? Or what's your plan to have right now? Potentially. I'll tell you what, uh, Mike Dawson has done a great job running the special teams. Um, obviously, he has people in the building that are helping him in the office with that. Um, but our special teams have vastly improved. Um, our our specialists, we need to continue to get better in those roles. But our coverage units, uh, when you watch the tape and, and compare to where we've been, um, I'm really happy with the progress we've made there. So I, I think that's just uh, when we put the puzzle together, figure out if that's a possibility or not. If it is, I would love to. You've always had, uh, put a premium on having athleticism at the quarterback position. And as you look for someone, an offensive coordinator in particular, I mean, are there, is that, a requirement for what you want the offense to look like going forward, or are there things that are on your list that are sort of not negotiable? Not necessarily. You know, I've been calling this offense for, I don't know, 10 years. Um, and I, I will say, Matt Lubick did a great job helping me. I, he's added some things to this offense that have helped us to be better. Um, he and I shared, kind of shared the play calling duties, but I was still engrossed in it. Um, if I'm going to turn it over to somebody, I just need somebody that has done it and that I can trust to put our heads together and uh, put the best of what they do with the best of what we do, and and then let him run with it. Is how, how, are, how is the roles going to stack up here the rest of the way with those four openings? Who's going to do what? Yeah, um, you know, Coach Held has done a great job with the running backs. Uh, Coach Brown is going to take over there. Uh, obviously, Ron Brown is experienced and done a great job. Um, Steve Cooper is going to be with the quarterbacks. Uh, Coops helped us a lot in the office and um, has been an offensive coordinator before. Uh, Mike Casano is going to take over at uh, receivers, and Frank Verducci, who has a lot of experience, is going to be leading the offensive line. You have an update on JoJo. I know um, he had the surgery and whatnot. Kind of what's his outlook? You know, going yeah, I, I don't want to comment on that out of respect to JoJo. Um, I'm going to let him kind of do that and make an announcement, and I had that agreement with him. Um, guys like him have poured so much in, and given so much to this university and this program that. Uh, he kind of wanted to do it in his own way, and I'm going to let him do that. Do you feel like uh, you'll have everybody else in the lineup, regardless of JoJo, that is going to stick with it the next two games? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, it, other than just things that happen and, and little tweaks and injuries here and there, uh, this team is a high character team. They got a lot of grit, um, and these guys will keep fighting and. and uh, when you go through hard times, you don't have much choice but to, to give up or come closer together, and, and I know this team will come closer together. I'm just trying to get, get drilled down on how difficult is it for you to turn over an offense to somebody? I mean, that's uh, your deal, right? Yeah, it, it's not going to be easy. I've got to find somebody that I trust. And, and it, it, I'm always going to have – I'm an offensive guy. I'm always going to have something to do with it. Um, you know. There's things about being coach in Nebraska that I haven't been able to enjoy because all the time that I've been spending, uh, you know, trying to fix problems and dig ourselves out of a hole and, and get the team better. Um, and I have to spend a lot of time uh, offensively, too. And not that I didn't have the right guys. Uh, again, I can't say enough good about them. Uh, but um, I need to be able to really trust somebody. I'll still be involved. But uh, that'll take a lot off my plate and I think help me be even better in some other areas. What have you come to appreciate about Trent and those meetings that you've had? I mean, he certainly has a great affinity for you. So what, I, what have you come to appreciate in those meetings about your conversation? You know, Sam, first of all, I just appreciate the conversations. Um, and anytime, you know, I, I'm not an arrogant guy. I don't think I know everything. And when you're done learning, you're done growing. Um, I get a lot of opinions and ideas. Most of them I don't listen much to. Uh, but his I do, and I think he's had some good, made some good points to me and uh, had some good ideas, and I, I look forward to working with him some more. Was there a moment where maybe he earned your trust and you earned his? Was that early in the season, after Illinois, before then? 
Uh, I think that's just kept growing every time we get together and get to know each other better. You know, it was unusual timing um, when he came in and, and there were some other uh, tough things swirling when he came in and um, we've been through a lot in a short time together. Are you worried at what you've seen from the, the players this week, especially the guys on offense who've lost their, their position coaches and, and what their, what their, uh, their mood and their, and their schedule is like? They're, they're hurting. Um, you know, I, I see the look on the offensive lines coach and the offensive line love Coach Austin because of the man that he is. Um, and it's the same with the uh, other positions and other groups. Uh, they're hurting, I'm hurting. Um, I've gone to a lot of games and battles and spent a lot of time with those guys. And like I said, they're, they're really good coaches and great men. Um, these are decisions sometimes you have to make as a leader and um, the kids are resilient, they'll be okay. Uh, what, what, Yeah, there's so much that goes into these decisions, and um, coaches have to fill a lot of roles. They're, I mean, they, they have to coach, they have to mentor, they have to recruit. Um, they have to get their guys to play well and execute. Uh, Sean Becton is, uh, I, th I think, a lead at all those things. And um, if we're going to have any continuity with some of the really good things we're doing on offense, uh, we needed some people here that, that know the scheme and, and can help. Uh, take it forward in the next step. You've, you've worked with Mario for a long time and have spoken really highly about his ability to develop quarterbacks. Have you seen enough growth in, in that room this year in particular? And, and what is it going to take to have that room operate at a really high level? For the yeah, uh, you know, these are, these are tough. Uh, if you look at our games, um, it's rare that you can find a game where you say, man, if you change that play, you win a game. You know, we have five of those. Um, Aiden, um, Mario has done an unbelievable job um, getting our quarterbacks right mechanically. Um, those guys going to the game knowing every read, every possible thing that could happen, every protection, uh, the detail that he coached with. He was in the office every morning at 345, every day. Um, that, that was his level of commitment and his passion for what he did. Um, and, and sometimes when you come up a play short, that, that's the business. Um, he's gotten Logan Smothers uh, throwing uh, a lot better than he did when he showed up because of his knowledge uh, for the position. Uh, he's done good things with Adrian, great things with Harburg. I've seen him do great things with our, our quarterbacks in the past. Again, this is not his fault. Um, sometimes uh, doing the same that being said, sometimes doing the same thing over and over and, and expecting different results um, isn't a possibility. Would you, expect, would you expect to have a QB-specific coach going forward, or is that something in the reshifting that even you could take on? Um, so yeah, I, I certainly would love to do it. Um, as I'm trying to kind of back away from some of those, those roles a little bit, that probably doesn't make a ton of sense. But I have to see how the whole puzzle fits together. Um, the, the first person I'm looking for is the offensive coordinator, and we'll, we'll fit the puzzle together from there. Scott, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you to fo follow up. You said something a couple minutes ago about not being able to enjoy the things that go with being a Nebraska coach. What, what exactly are those things? Uh, you know, this was a – I think people know, and, and it's not intended uh, at anyone that was here before, this was a big fix. Um, and, and, and I put my absolute heart and soul into this to – to get it where I want it and where the state wants it. Um, when you're working that hard to get it fixed, um, I'd love to be out talking to the fans more, and I'd love to go uh, do more booster functions. I'd love to go hunting more uh, in western Nebraska. Um, and th those things are important, I think, uh, for my sanity and also so I get to spend time uh, with people that matter in Nebraska. Um, I love the state. I love representing the state. I want to spend more time doing some of those things, and um, I, I think this will help me do that. Will you rely on input from whoever you find an offensive coordinator for the other staff positions? Potentially, yeah, potentially. Um, if I was getting hired as a coordinator somewhere, I'd, I'd probably have some strong feelings about a guy or two, and we got to see how all that uh, unfolds. No, no, everybody stayed on the team, right? Did anybody leave in the last two days? No, no, nobody's left in the last two days. We had a couple people with some family issues that weren't here today, but uh, we had a spirited practice today. The guys had fun being around each other. Um, 
and we're going to get back together on Sunday night, practice Monday morning. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.